What's up, YouTube? Leo Sheng here, host of the Extreme Philip Fishing Channel. <laughs> Today is March 7th, a Monday. I'm here at the Bush Creek in Yardley, Pennsylvania, right below the Delaware Canal, right? As I mentioned, in Yardley. And you folks have been asking me recently, right? What are some of the techniques that I usually use for my multi-species fishing, right? In creeks. So I decided to pick this location here to give you guys a demonstration plus a tutorial at the end of the video, okay? This place here flows below the Delaware Canal, as I've mentioned already. It's called the Bush Creek. Truth be told, I have caught plenty of different species from this place already okay i have caught largemouth bass i have caught different types of sunfish i have caught let's see what else common carp man i even landed a northern snakehead here one of these days right around those rocks okay so you know i've caught plenty of different types of fish here a uh, very little neat place to fish at okay so all right i gotta do the fishing portion of the video first hopefully i will be able to land some fish in the process and then i'm leaving the tutorial time in the description of the video so if you want to hop and just watch the tutorial you can just hop there and learn the techniques okay hope you guys enjoy it Come on, get it, get it. Get it, get it. Oh, I think he got it. Fish on. Fish on. First fish of the day. <laughs> First fish of the day is a freaking bluegill, man. And I'm telling you, I couldn't be happier to see a bluegill right now because I have been fishing for hours, folks. I've been fishing for hours and this is the first freaking bluegill that I caught today. Goodness, gonna take a couple photos and let it go. Hours. All right, we took a few photos of this beautiful sunfish right here. You guys can have a final view of this fish. Fish on. Yeah, there we go. Another bluegill. Beautiful little fella right here. Well, I tell you what, man, when the fishing stuff, even the bluegills count. You know what I'm saying? Little bluegill on night crawler, size 10 hook, circle hook. The same one that came in my lucky tackle box, right? There we go. Beautiful. I already took photos of the bluegill. I'm just gonna release this one. Best part is that you guys can actually see this release. The water's so clear here, you know? Yeah, beautiful, huh? There we go, sir. Whoa, 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 take it easy there, fish. Fish on. Fish on. And man, these fish, they pack a fight, even though it's winter time, you know? There we go. And you know, the size of this bluegill is not that bad, as you guys can see, you know? They're all pretty big, right? They're not that small, which is good. There you go. You have a close view of this fish. Beautiful. You got here, this is certainly a bluegill, Lepomis macrocurus. You got the blue on the operculum here, black dot on the opercular flap purple right indicators of winter time bluegill vertical bar dean vertical bars yeah gotta tell you beautiful fish all right since it's bluegill already and we already have plenty of bluegill photos just gonna release this fella here for you guys to see oh, it's a gorgeous fish and the water here is so clear too you know look at that huh fish is just chilling He's happy, man. Whoa, the bubble came out. He's happy the Asian guy is releasing him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right there. Oh, all quiet and stuff. Whoa, fast. 
very fast. Fish on. Fish on on the gold minnow. Yeah, there we go. All right, we got a bluegill on the gold minnow. I was using a night crawler, size 10 hook, circle hook, as you guys saw, I changed it to the gold minnow and the 164 ounce trout magnet jig head, see if I get any bites, any other species. And guess what? Yeah, little bluegill came up. That's great. That's great. Sometimes you really have to change your game plan to catch fish. You know what I'm talking about? So there you go, right? All right, little bluegill. The action kind of died off on the night crawler. I kind of decided to go with the bluegill. Whoa, 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 all right, all right, take it easy. The water's so clear, you know? Fish on, fish on, on the gold minnow. What we got here, that's not a bluegill. Not a bluegill, fellas. Second species of the day, man. Beautiful red breast sunfish. There we go. Yeah, Lepomis auditus. Lots of them in our local creeks. So, you know, I'm not surprised that there's one here at Buck Creek. Let's take a few photos, but before that, See, there's a little shades of blue here on the face. Long opercular flap, orange on its belly. Well, that's why it's called a red breast sunfish, right? There we go. We gotta take a couple photos. <laughs> and then gonna release this guy. All right, I took a few photos here of the red breast sunfish on the gold minnow, 164 ounce of a jig. If you guys watch, this video all the way to the end I'm actually going to explain what techniques I have used here to catch this fish yeah check this out yeah I'll check the size of the mouth of this fish definitely bigger than your regular bluegill huh all right let's release this guy here take it easy fish take it easy okay, get used to it whoa that was fast man <laughs> all right let's try to catch something else Can't even see my float. Man, I can't even see my own float. I cast too much to the right. Oh, now I can see it. Now I can see it. All right. Come on. Come on, bite. Oh, oh fish on. <laughs> yeah, small one. There we go. Yeah, small largemouth bass. <laughs> there we go fellas, the species number three of the day. Small largemouth bass, Micropterus salmoides, yeah. Beautiful fish. Let's take a couple photos and let it go. All right, we took a few photos here of our largemouth bass, the Micropterus salmoides. Yes, and folks, this is for you guys to see, right? That cast was a money cast, man. I could barely see my float, and then this fish decided to hit. Whoa, 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 take it easy, take it easy, fella. Take it easy, people want to see you go away. Look at that, huh? This is your, this is your 15 seconds of stardom here on YouTube. You wanna say hi to the subscribers? I think he just wants to go. All right, you're free to go. If you stop chewing on my thumb, there he goes certainly a gorgeous fish beautiful day here i gotta tell you guys i'm fishing 
Bush Creek here, right under the Delaware Canal in Yardley. I didn't have a lot of choices today. Uh, you know, the Delaware Canal is actually closed for fishing right now. The Delaware Canal is a trout approved water, so you can't really fish there one month prior to the trout opening day, which is April 2nd. So, you know, I decided to fish at Bush Creek that passes under the canal for some sunfish, just some simple multi-species, right? And things are going very well so far. If you guys reach the end of this video, in the end of this video, I'm going to explain to you the two main techniques that I'm using in this video, okay? One of them, one of them which is using night crawlers on a small hook, and the other one, which is using the gold minnow on a jig head, okay? But for now, back to fishing. Let's see what else we can catch here. Hopefully some different species, we shall see. Fish on. What we got here? Whoa, another large mouth bass? What, what is this? Wow, check this out. And this one's gorgeous too. Wow, no kidding. A small fella, but beautiful colors. There we go. Even more gorgeous than the last one. Wow, check this out, huh? What a beautiful fish, man. It can be small, but it's beautiful. And you know what? I just this, this is to show you guys, right? This guy has parasites in it. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. You know, the GoPro doesn't zoom in very well. There's a red worm right here. This is not an artery. This is a red worm right here lodged in its mouth. <laughs> but a beautiful fish regardless. See, got scar marks here. Probably something decided to chew on it or something. All right, let's release this little fella. So oh, needless to say, it's good to see that at least some fish, right, are eating good today. There it goes. Woo, fellas, it's about 2.30 right now, I think, in the afternoon. Yeah, 2.31. I've been fishing here for quite a while, truth be told. Thankfully, as you guys saw in this video, we were able to catch some fish here at the Bush Creek, right? We started the day with a few bluegills. Then we caught a red breast sunfish and then two largemouth bass. Not a bad day, given the conditions, okay? Uh, just so we, for you guys to have an idea, water levels have been higher than usual. You guys can hear this noise. There's a little waterfall right behind me, right? Water's kind of getting dumped into Bush Creek from the Delaware Canal. That's from all, you know, the rain that we had a while back water levels are pretty high okay and other than that water temperatures here in Pennsylvania are still below 50 degrees okay this water temperature here today I measured was 45 degrees Fahrenheit so in terms of fishing it is still quite brutal okay but anyways let me start this let me start this tutorial session of this video okay you folks have been asking me Leo what is it that you use right the different techniques that you use when fishing for multi-species in small creeks and as you guys saw in this video I really used only two techniques right the first technique and I'm gonna show you guys right I was using the mustad size 10 circle hooks right that actually came inside my lucky tackle box panfish for the month of February a very amazing little hook and as you guys saw in the video right what I was doing pretty much was hooking this little uh, size 10 circle hook right putting it on my line without any type of weight okay without any type of weight whatsoever I like to call this technique free falling okay if you are a bass angler you will understand what I'm talking about this free falling technique is pretty much the same thing as you would do as a bass angler right wacky rigging a sinkhole when you wacky rig a sinkhole, you pretty much just put, you know, put the sinkhole in the middle on the hook and you cast it in and you let it fall in the water. And when it falls in the water, the wobbling action usually attracts the fish, right, and makes it bite. This is very similar to that. When I come to a creek where I have absolutely 
no idea what type of fish is inside, I like to use a small hook, size 10, absolutely no weight, and just put a small piece of night crawler on it and let it fall naturally, okay? Now, when I hook my night crawler, I like to hook my night crawler in a quite sophisticated way, okay? It is not just any way will do. Right now it's kind of winter time, we are talking about water temperatures that are like less than 50 degrees. I like to hook the night crawler in a way that when I hook it, okay, and let me show you guys. When I hook the night crawler up, okay, I leave the tip of the hook exposed, but not only that, I will show you guys here. Okay, not only that, I like to leave an extra portion on the hook, okay? I will cut it here. I like to leave an extra portion on the hook, so when, the, when this falls in the water, it doesn't ugly as it doesn't look as ugly as this but the fish will see this extra portion and it still wiggles in the water so it gives it natural motion right and when you have that natural motion during winter time water uh, cold water temperature the fish really comes and bites it okay so your presentation needs to be a little bit bigger a little bit more lively when using this technique you can pretty much just cast your stuff there without a float just your line, no weight, and remember, right? The smaller, thinner the line, further you will be able to cast. So if you use an ultralight setup instead of a medium setup like I was using today, you will be able to catch cast much, much further, right? But if you can't cast that much further, what you can do is use a float, okay? So you can use a float and together, combine it together with the hook, I had to stop the video a little bit because you know I got a phone call <laughs> but back to the video right I was saying you can combine a float with your hook and just you know have a float the line and the hook right and every time you cast it out there with the float your line just sinks naturally there's no weight between your float and your hook so your night crawler is just falling you know with its natural motion and usually that's what attracts the fish to bite the cool thing about using a float, in this matter of fact, is that if you twitch your float a few times, right, that will make your line go upwards in the water. And when your line goes upwards in the water, that means your night crawler can fall once again, right? So this is the first technique. This technique, free falling, I really use it everywhere I go to, okay? When I go somewhere, you know, and I have no idea what type of fish is there, Put a piece of night crawler on, a small hook, no weight, and just cast out there, let it sink naturally, see if you get any bites. Highly recommended, okay? Second technique that I was using in this video, and that's another one that I highly recommend, not only for creek fishing, but for any type of multi-species angling, really, is suspended jigging, okay? So in the first one, we were doing free fall. We, let, we, we put the bait in the water, and we just let it fall naturally. This one is a little bit different, okay? We will be doing suspended jigging. If you were a bass angler, I would tell you that it's the same thing as jigging a jig, okay? But instead of your jig being on the bottom, it is actually suspended in the middle of the water. And for my suspended jigging in this video, as you guys saw, I was using a 164 ounce trout magnet jig head with a one inch gulp alive minnow and as you guys know this is really one of my favorite setups for multi-species fishing and micro fishing right i was pairing this up pretty much with a weighted float which i'm gonna put in this line for this demonstration right and as you guys saw in this video we landed what we landed a red breast sunfish on the gold minnow we landed the two large mouth bass on the gold minnow and a few bluegill as well so it is very effective you may have noticed in this video that the length of my line was actually pretty long, right? This was about the length of my line for this session. And why is that? Water temperature is cold, right? It is below 50 degrees. Fish, when it comes to the thermal climb, fish are hanging more all the way down. So I was suspending my jig head in the water as close as possible all the way down, but not all the way down. And the cool thing about jigging a gold minnow on a 164 ounce, a 164 ounce jig head is that every time you move, you tip your rod, right? You twitch it, right? 
that's the motion of jigging, your float goes this way on top of the water. And every time your, mo your float goes this way on top of the water, this line below the float goes a little bit up. And eventually, this is the motion that you get on your jig head, okay, when the line goes up. The jig head does small jumps like this, right, which entices the fish to bite. So once again, the two techniques that I like to use the most when using for, uh, when going for cricks, right, is really free falling, tie on a night crawler, or anything else, bread, you know, you could use anything really and just let it fall naturally or suspended jigging okay have a float a hook and a lure a small lure right and just jig it twitch your rod which makes the float move which makes the motion of your lure in the water go up and down okay two killer techniques that catch me a lot of fish okay hope you enjoyed this video hope you enjoyed this tutorial